Well, it all started away back uh, when I was president of the Olympic Committee and we were invited by the US Olympic Committee to form a Pacific Rim group, which consisted of Canada, USA, Mexico, China, Korea, Japan, New Zealand and Australia. Australia said no, they knew all about the Olympics, so they weren't interested, but we were. So we used to meet regularly, and then at a meeting in Seattle in 2008, they said, uh, we're going to have a Summer Olympics, a Summer Games. So I said to Barry Meister, our Chief Executive, why don't we have a Winter Games? Because all the other countries were in the Northern Hemisphere. So that's how it all started. Came back, got support from the Olympic Committee, and then went to major events and they said great idea we'll back you up to half a million but we'll give you a hundred thousand to research so we employed a guy called Arthur Clapp to go to the World Curling Organisation, Skating, FIS and all those Olympic committees they all were very supportive so we went ahead and uh, financially it looked fine and then the global financial crisis came just as we hosting our first games in 09 but we went ahead and this is our seventh games for the first five time five six years we had it two yearly and then 18 we've done it annually 18 and 19 so and has it changed a lot uh changed slightly uh we've added a few extra events and we did do speed skating at one stage in dunedin but uh, you couldn't attract the international because with skating you can do it any time of the year, but no. And we've added ice hockey, so no. But no, there's 26 events over six venues, so it's, a very, it's the third largest winter sports event in the world. There's the Olympics, the X Games, and now the Winter Games. And how tough has it been to sort of keep the momentum going? Has the community been supportive? Yeah, I think the success of people like Nico and Zoe has helped us a lot. But uh, winter sports, or winter ice sport, ice and snow sports, aren't as popular as rugby or netball. So it is quite hard work. But we've we had Audi for some years, or until this year, and they, that was a great help. And major events have been supported, but for uh, this year we haven't got a major sponsor. Well. QRC stepped up and Forsyth Bar, but uh, no, I think the awareness is growing and we've just signed a major contract with the largest uh, television company in China who are going to take all the World Cups for the next three years and they uh, are covered by most of the 1.4 billion people in China, so that should be amazing. Mm -hmm. So no, we're always optimistic. Um, and it's obviously been a big boost for the sort of region's yep. snow sport scene. Very significant. Um, how, how do you think that we can, what are other ways that we can boost non-tourism sectors in the region? Yeah, well I mean one of the other things I'm involved with is QRC and that's a classic. Education's a wonderful thing, they come for all year and so that's a great point. But this, I mean the wonderful thing about the Winter Games is the average competitor's stay is over three weeks. So they don't just come in for the games, they're here to train and everything. So it's a much bigger multiplier and it contributes a minimum of 10 million extra into the local economy just on those all the people staying and spending money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, what, do you see any other opportunities for that kind of diversification? We've looked at it and we've got a few ideas that uh, th other things we might add to it to, as you say, uh, widen the brief and uh, hopefully increase their income. Mm -hmm. And um, over the last 10 years obviously there's been a lot of growth in the region yep. overall but particularly yep. Queenstown. Yep. I'm just interested to hear your views on that, on that change. Where do you see us going? Yeah, I think look. When you live in one of the most attractive places in the world, and you can say that for Wanaka too, of course the numbers are going to grow. As everyone wakes up, what a fantastic place to live. So we have to accept it, but I think we've also, as far as tourism, we want quality, not quantity. We're much better to, like the Switzerlands of the world, attract people, 
they're prepared to pay.